G'day guys, welcome back to Stat Chat Sports. You're here with me, Josh, as well as BT and Tazza. We're back here for our weekly AFL podcast. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you're keeping up to date with all of our content because we're going to keep it pumping out all throughout the year. Fellas, let's get right into it with our regular segment, Hits, Misses and Hold Fire. We're looking for a team that was a hit, a team that was a miss and a team that we're still not sure about. We've had three weeks so far. We've got a little bit of a form line, but we still need to see a bit more. Of course, the other member of StatChat Sports, Steve, out again, back-to-back -back weeks, missing in action. We may need to go to the top-up list and get a new, uh, get some extra talent on board to get us through these videos. But I'll cover for him this week with his hit, the Western Bulldogs. Tazza, they had a really good win last Thursday night. Stop them from going 0-3. Much needed victory. They were right up against it. They really needed that. And yeah, got over the line in the end. Very inaccurate. At half time, it really should have been. Probably not so up, but they really should have been. Yeah, nine goals, 17. Not very impressive. VT, need to fix that up. But they'd be really happy with the contested possessions this week. Plus 25. Yeah, that's massive. That's where they lacked in the first two weeks. So that clearly showed dividends few changes as well putting McRae especially in that last quarter when the game was kind of on the line chugging him to the half forward Bailey Smith was run through the middle a fair bit more than just on the wing so they've got all these players there that can rotate through and Bontempelli he's still not playing his best so if he can hit some good form fit. no he doesn't look mm, it he's not fit yeah, he, he can't right. be so if he can maybe second half of the season if he can get that form then they, they look the goods they'll, they'll never do going to go Zero and three. Let's be real. We we said that in the last one as well. So eleven point margin. It was it was a lot more than that. They should have won by yeah. probably five six goals. And I think the most impressive part of not just this victory that they had, but the first three weeks, is the form of Tim English. Uh, Tazza, we were quite critical of English in our preseason video, but yeah, I think it was people were really starting to doubt whether that promise was going to come to fruition because he'd been given probably two or three years where this is his year. English takes the reins. English takes the number one mantle of the dogs. And it just never, never happened. Yeah, finally, we're seeing it. His work around the ground is just really good. It, he, he looks, he's the, the form ruckman of the competition. I mean, you've got the big dogs not really doing a hell of a lot. And uh, Grundy and Gorn, English looks, looks the goods. But it remains to be seen whether Steph Martin, what effect does he have? coming back into that team. Uh, in my opinion, the dogs should run with English. 100%. While, while he's on that form. It sounds like the dogs really want him back in. I agree with you, Tazza. I think, I think you've got to keep Martin out of the team and roll with a hot hand. English is looking good. He can carry the mantle himself. No reason to change it. Even if they do bring Martin back in, English, when he goes up forward, he, he's by far the best mark out of all those Ruckman. By far. But yeah, I, I agree. They, they should just keep Martin out at this stage until unless something changes and they have to make bring him in, but he, he looked really, he's definitely the number one ruck in the combat at the moment. Even if they go with uh, Jordan Sweet and maybe play a 75-25 split in the ruck, I think English needs to, to spend a good portion. It can't be a 50-50 split. I don't think you get enough out of English. You don't get that run around the ground from any other ruckman. You don't get it from Martin. I mean, right. let's be honest, he's getting on. He's, he's a good tap ruck. Yeah, you're not getting anything else from him. Tim English, he had his career high in disposals and clearances on the weekend. So certainly in some pretty good form. BT, let's head your way. Your regular segment, your miss, a team that has let us down this week. Friday night, the showdown. Oh, oh, Port no. Adelaide. Oh. Port Adelaide again. <laughs> this is abuse. <laughs> it's well-deserved though, Tazza. It, it is. It is. Well-deserved abuse. It is. Yeah. I know, I know we obviously didn't expect much from Adelaide and that's why it's more of a miss. Who knows? Adelaide could push top eight. We don't know. It's so early. But we had Port Adelaide so high in the rankings at the start of the season. So this is the stat that was shocking. It's given up seven goals from stoppages. Seven goals. That is massive. And you could see it as well. That obviously fixed up the rebound 50s from the week before against Hawthorne, but then they just gave up these stoppage goals. So these midfielders, they're... They're lacking. They're lacking a lot in Port Adelaide. And they're very surprising yeah. given the mix that Port Adelaide have in their Tazza. I mean, you'd, you'd know full well as a Port Adelaide man. There was a lot of pressure put on those the, the 
the young guys, that young core in that team. And apart from Butters in one game, I don't think we've seen a hell of a lot from any of them. Dersma got dropped. Connor Rosie has done absolutely bugger all this season. Butters had that really good game against, I mean, it looked good on the stat sheet, but it didn't convert to a, a win. They got an absolute shellacking from the Hawks, and that's that was the best game he played. These guys just aren't standing up. You got your wines and your bokes aim on to an extent, but there is no one standing out in that midfield. Where does Port Adelaide go from here? Have you seen anything redeeming in the first three weeks which gives you any sort of indication this team can turn it around? No, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> it's hard. To, it's Honestly, it's a hard watch. We've got a team that we all put out. Well, I think one of us didn't have in our top four, but most of us did. It was a consensus top four team, and they're sitting second last. Like I don't think you can find any positives in that. The one positive out of... The, the showdown was Marshall kicking a bag, but that's because he was playing on a guy of Port delisted and they ended up turning into a defender. You've got to be happy but, with that from Marshall, though. He was our man under the pump. We've been looking for something from Marshall for a good four or five years now. It'd be nice if he could show it against genuine opposition. I, I, I don't know if I'm asking for too much, but it is, it's the best I've probably seen him play. It's one shining light I could get out of, out of the game on the weekend. The one shining light for the rest of us stat chat boys is we had some pretty good feedback in the uh, in the message from our regular man R Dizzle, who was very critical of Port Adelaide and again calling for the tarps to come out. So certainly a bit of entertainment for our Friday night. We appreciated that. Tazit, let's stay with you. Hold fire. Give us a team that we're still not sure on. We need to see a little bit more of a sample size to know what we're dealing with in 22. I think. As a group, where we're still hopeful that they can achieve things, but I think the media have kind of turned on them this week. And I've got Richmond sitting one and two. The media have seemed to have really gone to town. Yes, they gave up seven goals in the last quarter. It was eight goal to one quarter. Sixty-four consecutive points unanswered mm -hmm. for Richmond. That's yeah. that's not good footy. It's not. They are missing a few guys. They got Prestia out. They got Martin out. They got Vlosten out. The Grimes they lost in the third quarter. That was a huge turning point, and you thrust Gibkiss straight into the. I mean, he wasn't the the uh, the be all and end all back there, but he had a, a much more prominent role to play. And for a guy who's played three games, he got towed up. I, I, I wouldn't happen. be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, the key position players take a long time. Whether this keeps happening and Grimes spends a lot of time out, oh, we don't know. There hasn't been any news on on his injury, but I, I think it's not all doom and gloom for Richmond yet. There's there's definitely a lot to like. Ralph Smith, his his emergence has been really nice down back, and he he pushed forward for a goal as well. Just we can hold fire on the Tigers for a bit. Yeah, BT, it's an interesting one because we didn't know where to place this team in our season preview. I think half of us had to make the finals, half of us didn't. The key factor that we said was injuries. If they have a clean run with injuries, they've shown over the last five years they're a premiership contender. If they don't, like they did last year out of the finals and didn't really look competitive. They clearly don't have that squad depth there because, like I said, when they won the grand finals, they had minimal injuries. So, And this year, they're missing key key players. But are, are we reading into their win last week too much? Because we obviously GWS aren't looking the best and they're playing at the MCG where they played terrible. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm hard against St Kilda. I have been, and they clearly <laughs> play very well. I, I didn't watch... One and two now. Yeah. One and two you are, BT. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't watch much of the game, but I, I was keeping up with the stats. They they clearly, ever since I gave them, gave them like a harsh bashing, they, uh, they picked They've it up. And they they you, responded. BT. They listened. <laughs> and not, not, the, not the captain. He's uh, still still uh, harsh on him. He's, he's, he's gone. He's gone at the end of the season. I know we're on Richmond. I just don't know. I don't know because... We don't know what's happening with Dusty. There's still no news on him. Like we said, Vlost and Prestia. It's just Rewalt. These guys are getting on in age as well. So that's the thing. At least these Gibbs and Ralph Smith, as Taylor pointed out, at least they're getting games into these guys for the next few years. I think we read read into their win last week too much. And I don't think I don't think they're gonna make finals. The problem we've got with Richmond, their next four weeks is not gonna tell us anything. So they've got the Bulldogs at home, presumed a loss, Adelaide away. You'd think they'd probably win that against Adelaide. We're not super big on the Crows this year. Melbourne at home, that's a loss. And the Eagles away, they're probably going to win that given how poor the Eagles have been. So 
I can't see the next four weeks really giving us any more information on Richmond than we've already got. Game day overreactions. When you're in the heat of a match and things are getting tense, sometimes you can just say a couple of things which are a little bit silly. We haven't just gone with the stat chat group this week. We've had a little bit of outside influence as well. We've seen a couple of silly calls coming in from the fans of stat chat as well as the media. So we will bring those up on the show this week. But to start off with, uh, the call whilst the GWS game was going on it was about a man that's been not too great over the last couple of years, but starting to look back to his normal self. Steve Cornelio is looking back to his best. And BT came up with the call that Cogs is a guarantee for an all-Australian Guernsey this year. Tazza, your thoughts on that? Uh, rate it. <clears throat> not an overreaction. Uh, I'll back you up 100% there. I think that game on the weekend was a huge turning point, albeit, uh, albeit against the Gold Coast. Yeah, no, nah, he did look very good. I think there's a 32 disposals. I think there's about 10 clearances. He, he looked as back to his best. BT, you're obviously pretty happy with the man, Cogs. You stand by your call on a half forward flank, or do you reckon he's cracking a, a midfield Guernsey? Oh, who knows? He could be in the back pocket. We don't know, but he's making, he's getting that, he's getting <laughs> that guarantee. So more than likely the half forward flank because he does hit the scoreboard. That's the big thing with him. I know last season they put him at full forward and he was just lost, but now he's running throughout midfield, going forward. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't make it, to be honest with you. Good call all round. We like that. BT, you nominated Carlton Hawthorne last week as the game of the round and you were definitely proven right. It was an absolute cracker, came down the wire. But I think in all the excitement, there was a few silly statements mm. thrown around, not just by the Stat Chat boys. Carlton, top four contender, top two contender was the call. And Steve went as far to say that Carlton would win the flag. Also saw some interesting calls in the media. Daniel Harford, who does have ties to both Carlton and Hawthorne, it must be said. He said that this was a grand final preview. Tazza, are we reading into this? Is this legit? Oh, that, that's uh, that's awful. That's clickbait. That's hundred percent clickbait. Look, great game. It, if you could put that there as a grand final, it'd look great. The spectacle that that game presented. But let's be honest, we've got two better teams, in my opinion, in Melbourne and Brisbane. Like Brisbane great. are just tearing it away at the moment. They'll they'll factor in somewhere, and as a pure spectacle. If we're looking at that as a grand final preview, then he's dead on. But the teams won't be there. Yeah, BT, are you thinking that Carlton's the real deal here? You know, are they going to be finishing top two? Are they going to be there right at the pointy end of the season? I think they're top two. I, I like that whole squad from, from defence to the interchange. They're Big call. They have good all round, especially with Harry McKay and Charlie Kerner up front. If them two stay injury-free for the whole season, that's the two best forwards in the comp right there as a combination. That's Interesting. very hard. To I, I agree, but I just, I'm thinking back to our season previews and I just, I keep remembering that we were so big on Geelong's forward tandem. It's interesting after three weeks that we've just completely flipped. And obviously clearly Harry McCoy uh, last year winning the common medal and Charlie Kerno is obviously clearly fit again. Paddy <laughs> Cripps fully fit. He clearly leading the Brownlow he would be three votes every game. They look yeah. really good. On Brisbane with Tazza saying he reckons they're one of the top two teams. They've had Port Adelaide, clearly shit house. Essendon, clearly shit house, and North Melbourne. Uh can't can't read in Brisbane too much. It's yeah, no, I agreed, but Brisbane were ruthless on the weekend. They they did not take the foot off the pedal. And I think that's it's that ruthlessness that will have them there at the pointy end towards the end well, of the that, season. They won't lose at home. So but yeah, I can see Carlton push, pushing at least top four. They're definitely up there. They've got the squad there. I can't go with you just yet on that. I want to see a bit more from Carlton, but I do agree they are looking in very good form at three rounds into the season. We have spoken about Port Adelaide already. Missing finals, I don't think is an overreaction, but the overreaction that I had, and this was before Port Adelaide lost the game, was that if Port Adelaide choke this game, which they did, Ken will be lucky to have a job. On Monday. Tata, do you think that Ken's going to lose his job this week? And if not this week, how long are we going to be waiting? Nah, as much as I'd love him to lose his job, 
Uh, it's not going to be this week. Koshy's got too much faith. The boys' club, there's just, it's too strong. Oh, I think they're going to go 0 5. I think they lose this week. The Lysette, Scotty Lysette, come out today and said, We're going to give it our all. We're going to leave it all on the ground. Well, where was that the last three weeks? I mean, I thought you meant to do that every game. I, I never knew you were meant to give half an effort. I thought you gave it all every time, but apparently not. So, look, they're going to go on five, and then Koshy's going to have some some calls to make. Round six is going to be big. If Port lose to the Eagles, yeah. that's when heads will roll if they lose. Yep. We're certainly looking forward to that one for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> make sure that you do send in your game day overreactions if you are watching this and you're watching the footy over the weekend. Had a couple of comments from Rich Guy Not on YouTube. Uh, last week, he thought that the Bombers would miss the finals as an overreaction. That certainly doesn't look like it's an overreaction now. Also, from the state, shout out to Justin Timberlake's brother, James Timberlake, uh, giving us some love on the YouTube videos. He's actually quite big on the Bombers, even after 0-3, thinks that they'll make finals as a game day overreaction. So uh, respect the call, like the call, keep them coming. We want to hear plenty more from you out there who are watching our content. BT, let's hand it over to you. It's your time to shine. BT's Game of the Week. Where are we heading to this week? Friday night, Geelong versus Brisbane. And hopefully it's a game like last year, not with how it ended, with uh, Bailey getting that, uh, that free kick, what wasn't paid. Oh. With uh, Blitzels that was... on the goal, that was, that was a robbery there. Umpire favouritism to Geelong in that game, that was. So Friday night, massive game this is, especially for Brisbane. If they can get, win this one, the first three rounds haven't been against quality opposition. So And Geelong only just got over the line against Collingwood with that massive comeback win. So this is oh, a big game yeah, for absolutely. both teams. Mm. The the big matchup is, I think it was last, last season that they had Charlie Cameron. Charlie Cameron tore him up. So... I remember this one. That was where yeah. Tom Stewart, he went off. Yeah, he? he lost his shit. Yeah. 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 Yep. That was uh, a good one. <laughs> so this, this will be, that's an interesting matchup. Clearly, Cameron could have kicked eight on the weekend if he kicked straight. Nearly yeah. got you through for your bowl prediction. Which yeah. I'm doing a little bit. Uh, if it, that's, the, that's the major matchup. That is. It, whoever wins that matchup, I think, goes on to win the game, to be honest with you. One thing that's going to be going in Geelong's favour is uh, the ruck matchups. Probably going to be a bit more even. Um, Big O, at the time of recording this, he hasn't put in an appeal, so it looks like he's not going to be playing this week. So it's going to be to the Geelong reject Darcy Fort, you would assume, <laughs> coming, up, coming up against whichever random 30-plus-year-old ruckman Geelong decide to roll out this week. So no real advantage at all. They might as well just play no Ruckman this week. Just play an extra midfield of both teams. Put Lockie Neal in the ruck. It's just going to be irrelevant with these two Ruckman playing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> hopefully it's a good game. We always like to see Friday night good games. We, we had it with the showdown, so hopefully they can back it up this Friday night and it's another good game. Have we got a tip, fellas? We've got a, we've got a tip at this point? I'm going Brisbane, just. Yeah. Yeah, I'll back that up. I think Brisbane too. Yeah, I like Brisbane as well. And we'll get onto that now for our bowl prediction segment. Usually Steve likes to run this. Taza, I'm going to hand it over to you this week um, to be the judge again, as you were last week, on the bowl predictions that we've had. Not a good week last week. We were 0-3 on bowl predictions. The Suns have never won at Giants Stadium. They are 0-5. They are going to beat the Giants this week. <laughs> I've got Jamara Uguhagen all up at six. Yeah, I'm confident, I think. Oh, Smoke and Joe and Charlie Cameron combined for 14 goals. BT, you were probably the closest. If it wasn't for some inaccurate kicking from the Lions, you might have been very close to your prediction of 14 combined goals for Charlie and Smoke and Joe. I think they had 13 scoring shots total. So That was the boldest and you were the closest. Yeah. I thought that was bloody good effort. Let's let's not forget, I also said in that that they'll win by 100 plus in that whole <laughs> prediction. So I got that part of it right. Well, well, do you yeah, want to, you want you to kick us off I'll as kick the us bold off. man himself? All right. In round four, there'll be a draw. Oh. Are you going to call the game or what? <laughs> no, I'm not. Three? I'm not going to go that, uh -oh. that bold because I was looking at the round and it's, I think there's going to be quite a few close ones. We can start off with the Geelong Brisbane. I think that could be reasonably close. You got Richmond Bulldogs. We don't know. You got Fremantle GWS. 
Adelaide Essendon, St Kilda Hawthorne. You've got two. two. St Kilda two Hawthorne. Cause... St Kilda and Hawthorne, or GWS and Fremantle. Okay, we're tipping a draw okay. in one of those two games. I like it. I Bold enough, Tazza. You've nailed it down to two. I mean, I wouldn't have called it bold if you're encompassing the whole round, but if you're going to nail it down to two, I'll give it to you. It's bold enough. <laughs> I'll have it. I'll let that slide. Well, I, okay, here, I'll back myself up. I'm going to give you some stats <laughs> right here, all right? Hey. We, here we, we go. With my bold prediction last week, we were saying that was way over the top. I did the odds. I was going to bet on it for Charlie Cameron and uh, Dana Herb, both to do... Kick, yeah, 14 combined. The most I could get to was 12. And that was at 21 to 1. And I thought, wow, that is terrible odds. I'm not betting on that. With just one draw in this round, the odds are 19 to 1. Pretty similar. Yeah, okay. So if you're going yeah. off the odds, uh, very similar. If we're going to quantify it, then yeah, you're, you're right on the you're right where you were last week. So well, how many yeah. how many draws do you get in a year? Three. Oh, usually you'd get, yeah. Two, three, two or three. Yeah. 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 One sat in this uh, round. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give the, the tick of approval. You got it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, mate. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to give my tick. I can tell you right now. <laughs> Go on, shoot. I'm more, I'm more the king of the mild predictions, I think. So um, <laughs> I might just stick a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going back to the Geelong Brisbane game. I've got a stat for you. Brisbane have not beaten Geelong in Geelong since 2003. This was back in the dynasty era of the, of the three-peat. So it's, it's been quite a long time since they've beaten Geelong in Geelong. Now, you wouldn't say it was bold for me to tip Brisbane to beat Geelong in Geelong. I already know that, which is why I've got to go bigger. We said earlier, we think it's going to be a close game. I don't. I think the Lions are going to have a big win. Five-plus goals. They're going to beat the Cats in Geelong for the first time in almost 20 years. Uh, is it bold or is it mild? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's not that bold. It's unlikely. The, but it's not bold. Can I chime in here? Chime if in, we, please. If we're just going straight, <laughs> I know obviously you said five gold, and that, that's obviously makes it a little bit better. But just yeah. a head-to-head market straight away, it's nearly even money. Geelong clearly that's aren't, thought, they yeah. aren't as dominant down in Geelong. Uh, for the last few years, Eston have beaten them down there. Taz <laughs> makes a it's decision. A, it's a line ball call, but yeah, it's right. I'm going to go. It's 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 mild for me. It's mild. It's mild. It's mild. Yeah, Do I need to give I'm a bit sorry. of extra mayo or something? Do I need to add anything on the top? Uh, give me smoke and Joe. Give me smoke and Joe to kick five, and the Lions to win by five goals. There you go. Yeah, that's bold enough for me. Yeah, I like bold it. Bold enough. Yep. No, yep. Five and five. I like it. I also do have Steve's bowl prediction as well. He okay. did send it through, even though he's missing an action. And I have to say, you're gonna you're gonna like the boldness of this call. He, I hate he knows the, a bold prediction. I hate the call personally because I hate what it means. But there's no denying that this is a bold call. The Eagles will be defeated. The Eagles will not win a game for 2022. That is Steve's bold prediction. That's bold. That's when was ridiculous. the last time a whole team went defeated? A, a team went defeated in the whole season. I would be university back in the day. Not even the Suns yeah. went defeated. The Suns didn't. The they scraped through for one. It's That's bold. Look, it's bold. <laughs> it's bold. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely, I'll sign off on that one. But uh, whether that's even in the realms of possibility, I'm not sure. They might as well just tank. Just tank. Get that number one draft fit. The, the season's over anyway. The season's got an asterisk on it. Anyway, for them, I mean, it's pretty tainted with the start of the season. I mean, what's the point in salvaging it at this point? They're going to be in and out of COVID protocols. You, I agree, they might as well just grab picks. Taza, my prediction, give it to us. Your you want to hear prediction. I seem to have a lot of predictions that are based on team selection. The last, last week's one really didn't work out for me. <laughs> I mean, that was all dependent on Aaron Norton not playing, and he played. Jamara kicked the first goal. I was up and about. <laughs> I thought about messaging you guys. I was like, oh, here we go. And what did he do? That's all he kicked. It's he kicked one goal, two for the game. But I'm going to go with another one, pending team selections. Tex Walker. Is Tex! Set to come back. 
the big Texan oh, okay. is coming back. Wow. Pending. Matthew Nix did say in the press conference, without prompting, they said Walker has to come back in. So he's very likely to come back in. I think he comes in for Darcy Fogarty. You don't kick out Himmelberg after four goals. You don't get rid of Gowan after four goals. He comes in, albeit against Essendon, but he gets, he kicks a bag against Essendon. Hasn't played footy for eight months. I think he comes in and kicks six. The text going bang for six. I think that's bold enough. I like it. Yeah, I'm with you. I like that. I like that goal. It's bold and it can definitely pay off. I, yeah. That's a good one. That That's one of the best ones we've had, I think. That's a, that's a good call there. Thanks, fellas. Oh. I was hoping you were going to have a shit one so I could rip into you, but uh, I have to agree with you on that <laughs> you've, already, you've already ripped into me with Port. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> he does need a break, actually. He's getting, he's copying a lot of shit from our Dizzle as well. I mean, we need to ease up on him, all right? He's... Yeah, our Dizzle, please, if you're listening, just let up. I'm hurting. <laughs> <laughs> the tarps will probably come out, but just lay off me for a little bit. <laughs> we are all hurting here. None of our teams that we support have actually won a game so far this season. We're oh, hoping yeah, that it changes. <laughs> we, we'd love to have a little bit of change coming up this year. Um, if you're optimistic about your team in the comments, let us know. Brag about your team. If you're a Carlton fan and you're up and about, we want to hear from you. Melbourne's still on track to be undefeated, like Steve said back in our predictions video. So... <laughs> We want to hear from you in the comments. Let us know who you go for. Let us know what your bold predictions are. And more importantly, subscribe to the channel. Show us that you're interested in the content that we're putting out because we love doing it, fellas, and we're going to keep pumping it out all throughout the AFL season. Kaza, BT, nice work. Good work from you today. I think we've done well. Again, again with Steve out of action. He's got to be back next week, or I think we are going to dip into the reserves and get a special guest on the podcast for next week's show. Aside from that, we will see you in the next video. All right. Thanks, guys.